This week, Lydigo looked out and caught a cause for concern. The children of scrapbookers tend to be photographed often, creating albums filled with all sorts of stories. But what about our own childhood memories? Can we adapt our scrapbooking style to something that works with relatively few photos? Glidigel, can you assist with a little autobiography? Of course I can. Today I'm going to have a look at some different ideas in working with the few photos that I do have from my childhood. Now I know I have um, a few more than some and a few fewer than others and we all have a different uh, amount of photographic evidence of our childhood days and mine have come from all sorts of different sources. So I wanted to start by sharing fi five different ways that I've been able to find photos to help tell my childhood stories and these are all different things that um, have worked for me in some way to get photos uh, even if they weren't the exact photos I was imagining in my mind they've all been really useful so my first step is really obvious and that's to ask ask and ask again uh, whatever family you have that may have taken photos when you were little just keep asking them. Don't assume that nobody has any photos of your childhood just because you don't remember somebody always sitting around with a camera. Um, I've found plenty of photos that I didn't ever realize existed uh, through this method. So make sure others know that you you would be happy for just a digital version. You're happy for a scan for a photo of a photo. You're not wanting to take all the originals away. I found that that really helped um, help me make some progress. I think when I started talking to people about, oh, I really enjoy making scrapbooks and I want to make scrapbooks about my childhood. Do you have any photos of um, when I was a kid? They would assume that I wanted to take their physical photo collection. And that's not what I'm interested in. And I'm, I'm sure that most of you are not interested in that either. I'm completely happy to have a digital copy. If you've got a box, it's a big old mess of old photos. Let me sit down with it for an afternoon with my camera and I'll take pictures of the photos and I won't take anything away from your house just what's on my memory card um, or if you have a scanner you can go that way I have better luck taking photos of photos and don't have a scanner anymore um, but whatever works for you to get a digital version uh, and the more you ask the more <laughs> you'll finally get people going oh actually I do have that box in the loft um, because quite often these are photos that are are put away and not in an easy place so you may need to be a little bit persistent and uh, approach it as a long-term goal second one is to connect with childhood friends <laughs> via Facebook or anything else that it works for you. Facebook has been what's been successful for me. And just let those friends know that you're looking for photos of your school days in case they have some or their parents have some. And what I found is that each of us had kind of one or two shoe boxes. And then by sharing them, we found that we had quite a decent collection of all the different things that we did in school. Uh, so I started asking and letting people know that I really would like to see photos like that. And I also found that the more photos I shared with my friends from uh, from my youth on, on Facebook, it was a little bit contagious, where if I find a, another three photos and I I posted them and shared them with the, those people that are in them, then that would kind of be a little bit of a kick for them to go, oh, hey, Mom, can I get those pictures too? And um, And we found more and more that way. We go through little phases where um, there'll be kind of a flurry of those images and then we don't talk about it for a while and then it happens again. So it's just a nice way to find different pictures from our childhood days. Third one, find your school yearbook. Now you might have your own copy and then that's easy. If you don't have your own copy, ask to see if a friend has a copy or there may be an archive copy in the school library in some sort of school office for your area even if your school doesn't exist anymore and um, there may be someone somewhere that has it uh, in some sort of local archive or a local historical society anything like that and then you can take the photos that are in there and scan or photograph the pages and print the photos at whatever size you want I'm going to be using a one photo like that today Speaking of historical societies, that's number four. You may be surprised to find if there's such a thing for your hometown, um, even if you never expect it. 
with a little searching, I was able to find a friends of group from my hometown. I come from a really, really, really small town. And sure enough, there was this friends of that town kind of group. And they had a collection of photos online that I could print digital copies from. And the last one is to use Google image search or maps to find photos of locations that are important to your memories. Now, you probably won't find anything where you're actually in the picture. And you may actually find a lot of articles that don't match up with your memories, <laughs> but you'll find photographs of the architecture and the local traditions that you remember, even if the buildings have been knocked down and the traditions have been replaced with something else. Those five different places did help me find all sorts of different photos that have gone into my albums, photos that are still in my uh, stack to scrapbook. And today I'm going to be using two different photos that come from um, two of those different sources. So uh, this one comes from Facebook and a friend who still lives locally to the town where I grew up happened to visit the high school for some reason and took a picture of the trophy um, from my senior year that's in the, ca the, the trophy case at the school. Uh, so I didn't have a photo of it from the actual time that it happened, so it's nice to have the photo uh, even if it's been snapped last week. And then I have a second photo that's from our high school yearbook and uh, it's not a particularly amazing photo, but it's the only photo I have of, uh, of this particular story. So I'm going to use these two together and uh, this range of supplies. I wanted to work with, um, with plenty of turquoise today, but I also wanted to bring in my school colors just a little bit. When I started scrapbooking my high school photos, which was when I first started scrapbooking, because I started scrapbooking just shortly after high school when I was in college. And so my high school photos were things that I had photos of then. They weren't so old as they are now. And I used a lot of my school colors. My school colors were purple and gold. And I used them on every page and not a lot of pattern. And what I found was after I'd done quite a few of those pages that I found the purple and the gold was so garish against the photos that I had trouble focusing on the stories and the pictures. And I found that the color was a little overwhelming. So with a bit more experiment, experimenting with the color and, and plenty of pages made over the years, I realized that what I really like is to have a color scheme that I'm just happy with and then to throw in some purple and gold accents. So I'm starting with that turquoise today, but I'm going to be adding some gold and some purple accents. And they're going to be pretty subtle, I think. Um, but I think the combination will work well so that I get enough of an idea of the school colors, but not that garish purple and gold that I struggled with in my early days of scrapping. So for my background here, I have two papers pulled out. I'm going to use this older bow bunny polka dot as uh, just the outside frame all the way around the edge to bring in the gold and then this studio calico print with the turquoise stripe that's from print shop and that's going to go inside there i'm not really worried about the wording here i just like the um, that that fine stripe that goes all the way across i have pulled out some purple and gold in six by six, but um, purple was really hard to find in my stash. And I have gone with the golds here and this um, set of journaling boxes that includes some purple and turquoise. They're both from the autumn, all of those are from the autumn crisp. And then the purple is actually from an older uh, crate paper uh, collection called Acorn Avenue. Got my background set up and I want to put some color across the middle of the page to start. So I have two of the six by six patterns and that's where I'm going to begin. And it turns out that in trimming this, this uh, turquoise print down, I lost one of the bits of wording that I wasn't too worried about at the top. And it looks like I can lose the other one, the other two behind these, um, six by six layers. So now I just have that turquoise stripe that I had uh, really liked from the beginning. And I have my two photos to go across the middle here. But I thought uh, with the black and white and with this being the smaller photo, it could do with a bit more weight. So the other six by six in the gold, I trimmed down to work with that particular picture so that it's just a little bit bigger than the photo. 
and the other photo I'm going to leave without a narrow mat. It's just going to go on its own. It's a little bit bigger so it has a bit more weight on the page and it's in color so there we go and now I want to start adding a few things to this so I'm just going to start up here in the top corner and then mirror it down here in the bottom corner so I'm going to try a few different uh, combinations of journaling cards and things like that until I get something that I really like now I'm um, one thing that scrapbooking your own childhood may require is a slight change in style if you tend to use lots of photos on your pages. If, um, if you tend to be the kind of scrapbooker who has so many photos from every event that your, your problem is actually how do I get them all on the page rather than where do I find um, enough photos to scrapbook, then working with your childhood stories, if you have fewer photos than you do today, can be a little bit of a challenge. But it just takes adjusting the mindset to say it's okay for the page to have one or two photos rather than a whole bundle. What I've found is that I tend to have one or two pictures from most things, unless it was an event where somebody decided they were really going to take photos and then I have a big stack so something like a concert at school I might have 15 shots and they all look alike <laughs> or um, other things I just have one single random photo there's not a whole stream because that's the difference in how we how we took pictures when we were worried about the cost of film and and just working in a, in a different mindset than today when we don't think anything about snapping 20 shots to get one that is something we like and um, because digital is it doesn't have any additional cost and as long as your battery's charged you're good to go so and there is a little bit of a, a different mindset in how we take pictures so we end up with with a lot more images per event now than we did when many of us were younger okay I have those four larger cards in place I'm thinking I can place my title here or here I have plenty of room to write, and I can start to bring in some smaller embellishments to balance this. I like the idea of balancing um, lots of rectangles and squares with a few little circles. So I have a circle just punched out from the printable sheet, and I thought this could go up here at the top. Um, I like this this little phrase partially for being cute, but also sometimes things, um, when you see them printed out, they spur some sort of memory. And um, if you can say the oh yeah without thinking of the song from Ferris Bueller, and well the song existed before Ferris Bueller, but that tends to make people know what song you mean. Um, if you can say oh yeah without thinking of that song, then... <laughs> Good for you, but I can't. And we used to have on the way, this is all about um, being on the debate team at school. And on the way to debate tournaments, we had a, a, a tape. These days we would call it a playlist, but of course in those days it was a mixtape. And we would play a certain set of songs before every tournament. And the Oh Yeah song from Ferris Bueller was on there. It was a bit of a, a um, mental pick-me-up kind of song and so we would all uh, hum along and and do the funny sound effects so uh, when I saw that on this month's printable that it all just started coming together and then a friend had found the trophy to take a picture of and it seemed like it was time this page needed to exist and um, I'd like to bring in something yellow up here so I'm thinking maybe this one can come in here as well Just get a little bit of dimension going and then I'll stop um, embellishing to do all the writing and then I'll come back and do smaller embellishment as well. And I'm doing lots of angles on this particular page. I'm just trying to keep the angles relatively small and as long as I find that they're just a few degrees at a time then I really like the end result. 
I think that's where I'm going to pause for now to get my journaling and my title on the page and then I'm going to come back and do more embellishment. It took me just a little bit more space to write the journaling than I expected so I added in that third gray journaling box that was just from the same six by six sheet and I had one little kind of snarky comment at the end that I wanted um, separate so I just wrote it in this tiny little corner and if you can't read that on the um, photo version of the layout it's and um, that this bit all explains uh, how I got involved in debate and how we won the championship but then um, the very end says that there was a full school assembly about uh, presenting the trophy and uh, over here it says much to my embarrassment I was not completely convinced that uh, an, uh, gathering the entire school to celebrate my geeky hobby uh, was <laughs> particularly the the wonder, most wonderful thing for me at 18 but there we go so I just uh, added all that into the corner and then the title up here now I have used th uh, turquoise stickers with glitter for the title and then I wanted to bring in that bit more purple but I had a a little bit of trouble finding purple letter stickers in my stash I've linked up some purple lettering from the shop uh, when you go to the supply list but I ended up using a really old lavender alphabet from Sassafras I'm afraid this one isn't available anymore I'm sorry but I've had it in my stash for um, many many years and it's time that it needs to go on a layout or uh, be gone probably so I've used uh, purple uh, stickers there as well now I am um, want to add a little stamping to the embellishment so I'm going to just kind of set the layout aside for a moment to do that now I know this seems a little odd this is my printable sheet what I want is this color that's right here and I'm going to use this stamp because I've used that journaling or the the 3x4 card from here that has good stuff and the Amy Tangerine stamp also has the good stuff idea so I'm going to stamp this onto the blue knowing that I'm not going to use the card as a 3x4 it's just that I want that beautiful color that is there and I like this little texture detail at the top too and for this I'm just going to start my stamping in black so that I have something that goes along with that good stuff card since that's in black and white and there's not really much else in black and white on the layout right now I'm going to stamp this a few times, not quite sure how many I'm going to use on the finish page, but I'll give myself a few to work with. The other set of stamps I wanted to use this week was this one, and I wanted to use this plaid texture stamp uh, to go along with the fact that I spent most of uh, this particular year dressed in various plaid suits, apparently. So, um, I wanted to use that as some sort of border piece or punched piece and I have to admit that last week I played maybe a little trick not really a trick but I wanted to see um, what you thought about something and if you remember this layout I spent a lot of time making this inked and stamped border in the background and then I covered a lot of it up <laughs> so you only see all this little bit around the edge and when I was making it my um, my thought process was that I bet some people will look at that and think why bother to do all that if you're only going to let a little bit of it show and it turned out that that prediction came true and the, the thoughts um, on whether you would use that exact technique in that way are a little bit mixed and a lot of people who like this technique preferred the idea of keeping the centerpiece smaller so you could see more of the background now that's fine it's absolutely a completely valid um, response and I don't have any problem with that but my my curiosity was to see if I did spend a little bit of time doing something and then I covered it up would that be a gut reaction from some crafters because I am I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to cover all of that detail up and uh, I didn't feel bad that I'd done a lot of work um, that isn't seen but that's just part of my creative process and everybody's creative process is different for all sorts of different reasons now if you want to um, kind of join in that discussion we've started a discussion on the general scrapping message board that's all about how much space is important to you and are you um, 
Are you concerned with something that maybe only shows for an eighth of an inch, but you would still use a good pattern there? Or you would ink and stamp and then cover it up um, just to get the, the look around the edge? Or would you have preferred to have things uh, smaller and, and keep that on show? Or would you maybe have a layout that comes together somehow like this and then think that, well, I did like how this looked even though it didn't end up on display, so I'll use that technique again and I'll be more careful about the spacing on a different page and they'll still look different. All sorts of different processes and I love discussing creative process. So I'm really happy to see that um, that people have chimed in with different things that, that make sense to them as they craft. I love hearing about all the different ways that we create. So what I wanted to do this week was show you a way that you could use the stamps that doesn't involve doing all of that and then covering it up, but still has the idea of layers. So I've used the texture, um, that plaid texture stamp, just four times in a row on a sheet of turquoise 6x6 six six paper. I did find with these texture stamps, these three here in the middle, I got a better impression if I used chalk ink or pigment ink rather than my normal fast dry dye inks. I just got um, a better a better look from the entire stamp, so in case that is helpful to anybody. But this time, instead of stamping straight on the background, I've just done it on a scrap of paper. And this way, I can still have my layers, but I can tuck things underneath and I can decide which spot they should go in. I'm wondering, should it go there? I think it's better off here. And just move it along a little bit so that it was shorter than the purple. Now, there's still not a lot of that stamping on display, but it took me the time of stamp one, two, three, four, and cut a strip of paper. So I haven't invested a lot of time in that, and if I decide that I wanted to use it somewhere else on the layout, it's easy to repeat. Um, and I've still got that idea of using my stamps, and I have the texture, and I was even able to find a texture that helps me tell the story. Um, was able to bring in a little bit more of the, the color that I wanted to use. So that's um, another way to do a very similar sort of thing, a very different end result, but uh, same sort of thinking through the process. So I just wanted to show you those two in comparison. And now time to finish up with some smaller embellishments. I have my um, Good Stuff stamped pieces. I found that I started to to punch or die cut them out in perfect circles and then I found the design actually lended itself better to a hand cut circle uh, so that it's kind of imperfect just like the stamp design uh, rather than trying to cram it into a, a perfect circle it just didn't sit uh, quite so well to my eye then the things I had pulled out to finish this I have my stamped pieces I have some stars some stickers and maybe a little washi tape if I need it. And I also cut out two more of the small pieces from the printable just to get the same colors, but the words are not the words that I want to use. So I'm gonna see if I can tuck them in somewhere where there'll be something else on top of the wording, but I can just have that little splash of the matching color down in the other corner. So I think I'll go ahead and be brave. Assume that I will find something that I can uh, cover that today with because I'm not writing this in the in the same time. Now, honestly, the the, the word today, <laughs> we put it on pages all the time and we don't really mean that we took those photos the same day that we made the layout. But I don't tend to use the word today when there's a big gap in between the photos or the story and the journaling that I've written because this is my perspective of looking back. If I had written that in 1996, I would have written it differently. So, um that's why I don't, I don't really want to use the uh, today wording on my page. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Now, I can cover that with something like this particular sticker. This is Oh Happy Day. This is a little bit along the same lines as today, but not completely. And if I move it along so that I'm just lining it up with the end of the Y in today, and down a little bit, then I can get as much of the blue there. So now I have those two little accents that coordinate. 
And it seems now I, I've bridged the gap between the purple paper and the purple lettering, but I now have a lot of open space here. So that would be a good spot to bring in one of these. I think it needs something behind it. Maybe start with that that piece from the printable, and I have some little strips here. Starting to get there. In the embellishment, there are a few things that are tucked away just for color. So I have one of the good stuff circles here, but the other two are just tiny little notions around the corner. Um, and you saw that that wasn't too big a deal to just stamp and cut out three. And I really liked one, but I tried them on top and I thought three of them was too much repetition. But I liked the color and the line repeating just a tiny little bit. So covering them up or well tucking them underneath was something that would work. And I added in um, some little embellishments that actually help tell the story. So I used um, a pencil sticker from October afternoon and was able to customize it with some letter stamps to make it have the initials for my school. And then this little row of embellishments may seem a bit random with the, um, the flowers, but uh, what I was remembering was I, I was looking through my embellishments in the right color and found that I had several different yellow flower arrangements. And because the colors were purple and gold, uh, I ended up with a lot of purple and yellow flowers after this event. So it's just something that it looks nice on the page to me and uh, it actually sparks a little bit more story in my mind. And it may, be, it may be that in this creative process of picking out bits and pieces like that, I've now come up with a lot more depth than what I actually wrote on the page. So I may need to add in an additional sheet for journaling and put that in my album too, but I'll see how I go with that. Now I just wanted to finish with one last little detail. I started using these little vellum star stickers and they have several different colors on the sheet, but there are three black um, black stars on here and they have the biggest impact because their color is the most obvious. So I wanted to use them um, to kind of mark off the important parts of the page. But there's also turqu turquoise and yellow and, and pink and all sorts of different shades on here. They do work a little bit different than normal stickers because and um, it's a sheet of vellum that's printed and has adhesive and then is die cut on a sticker background. So just have to be a little careful when taking them off the page. But because they're vellum, it means you can overlap and, and see the other elements through the sticker, of course. And you can use them a bit like enamel dots. There's all different sizes. So if you want to do little triangles of three here and there, they'll work just the same way as your enamel dots or sequins or anything like that. And this is where I'm going to leave this one as finished. And I would love to see if you can find any childhood photos through any means possible. You might have a big collection of your own childhood photos. You might not. So um, if, if you want to go on the search and see if you can find something that helps tell your story, by all means do. I'd love to see what you make in the gallery, and I'd love for you to join in our discussions on the message board. And by the way, if you, could, if you have stories and you can't come up with any photos, please don't despair. There's another Glitter Girl adventure all about layouts that don't have any photo at all, and I'll link you up to that one so you can click right over to it if you prefer. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.